Opening a restaurant during COVID has had its challenges. We are still trying to do stuff, not only for ourselves, but there's other people in this hospitality industry that, that need help as well. That's where our OC Smoke Kitchen came about. We're hoping to feed at least 800 people at this event. We're gonna actually gonna do some full pork tortas and hopefully just get people in a better mood. We have 40 pork butts, which is about 360 pounds worth of pork that's on the smoker right now. Pork is just, I think, a really flavorful piece of meat. It's something that's on the cheaper end, especially with the food shortage that we're going on right now. Right in the middle, right in the middle. There's one over the top like that. One over this way, tuck it down. Same with the other side. Push it down, make sure there's no air in it at all, and then place it right back in front of you. Okay, keep going. I just put together this badass crew, my friends in the hospitality industry, guys that I knew that could handle that amount of people. A lot of folks offered just to come work because they didn't want to sit at home. We pull at least 10 butts off and start breaking them down. We're gonna chop it up. We're gonna start setting up the table. So the way it's gonna work is we're gonna do bread and then we're gonna have our avocado, our beans, and then salsa and sausage is going on there too. We are going to be building a fire with our California white oak. I like this wood because it's a really neutral wood. We can cook different proteins with it. It won't overpower another protein that we might be cooking in the smoker. I love the you know baked cookies kind of smell that you get with this. My kids love it too. They, they really think that sometimes they think that there's waffles being made or something like that. Light her up. The hardest part of having something like this here in California, it's something that they've never seen before as far as our local health departments, so I worked really closely with my pit builder. These are the very first smokers to be NSF certified in the state of California. Big milestone, not just for our restaurant here, but for craft barbecue. We like to experiment and take chances on things. There's always something different, and that's, that's, that's me in a nutshell. So what we have here is a full Packers Cut brisket because of the meat shortage that we're having right now. We're basically at the mercy of trying to uh, get whatever protein we can. Just because this isn't something that's prime or Wagyu doesn't mean that it's not gonna be as great. We are gonna start building our uh, brisket roulade. We're cutting this so we can roll it up. So it's a little different than doing a traditional brisket. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. And I'm gonna have Nick take over and butterfly it here. Here with uh, Chef Nicholas Echore. He's our chef de cuisine. Roulade is it's a dish that consists of meat that's wrapped around some kind of filling. First thing we do is we just make a line in the center, and then this is where we're gonna start butterflying it out from right here. For our filling, we kind of do a take on a duck cell. There's some mushrooms in here, caramelized onions, mirepoix, rosemary, garlic, thyme, and parsley, and a whole lot of bourbon too, because we want that flavor to kind of come through. You know, when we do this, we don't have to worry about everything being too perfect. You know, the imperfections are kind of nice, because, you know, again, this is, this is barbecue, you know? So now we're just rolling it up here. We have our rub here. This consists of uh, rosemary, thyme, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and black pepper. Here's the finished product. So we'll let this sit overnight and then it'll be ready for our smoker. Mmm, we're gonna eat today. We make Central Texas barbecue work in California because it's something that hasn't been done here in a restaurant form. We're introducing a lot of people to, uh, to things that they've never had before as far as barbecue goes. We had these uh, beautiful whiskey barrels delivered to us. Thought it would be great to you know, take a ham and cure it in a bourbon barrel. This is a version of a Virginia ham. Um, it's not aged as long, but this is gonna be cooked and smoked, and we're still gonna apply a cure, so we're gonna do a 14-day cure on this, um, and it's actually gonna rest in a bourbon barrel from Texas. 
So all we're doing is we're gonna take the skin off and then we're also gonna take a lot of the fat off too. Yeah, we want the cure and we want the flavor of the barrel to get into the meat. So now all we're doing is just seasoning this thing and then we're gonna hang it inside of our barrel afterwards. All right, so now we're just gonna put some of our uh, curing seasoning on the bottom here, just sprinkle it around the bourbon barrel, uh, just so it has a little bed to sit on. And we're just gonna lay it right in there with the ash. All right, so we're gonna just lay it on there. Really try to get the meat to absorb all those flavors from the barrel. A lot of those charred flavors, a lot of that vanilla, caramel notes that come through whiskey. So we're gonna be making a, a, a bourbon uh, glaze for this, uh, our pit smoked ham. Some really good Texas bourbon. Pork and bourbon just goes great together. So this is uh, Chef Josh Lozano. We've become good friends over the last uh, few years or so. You know, he's doing these awesome cheesecakes and something that I think that we really wanted to showcase at the restaurant. So barbecue cheesecake, I, I, um, I made this cheesecake initially for my wife at home and I had an extra one I wanted to give it to Chef Danny. He really enjoyed it and he had the bright idea of, hey, let's put it on the smoker and see what happens. So this is a rye shortbread crust, which is not super traditional because the way that it'll cook in the smoker from the top down and the way that the smokers um, are built is the heat will rise to the top and it kind of spirals down all the way down the tank. Uh, so in theory it is coming from the top down, so we wanted to try it and we did and it came out super awesome. All right, so we got uh, two boneless pork butts here. And so we're gonna cube these up for, uh, so we can grind it for our sausage. And we're gonna be doing two different types of sausage, our red chorizo and our green chorizo. This is pork belly that we smoked uh, last week and we vacuum sealed it. This is gonna go into our sausage mix and just gonna add like another like level of flavor. But these uh, these hogs are special because they eat acorns on the ranch. So that's why they got like this crazy amount of fat. When it's raw, you want to eat it just because of the way it smells. It smells super sweet. This is our wet ingredients here now. This is a mixture of jalapeno, cilantro, parsley, and uh, green onions. Uh, the green chorizo, it's a really herbaceous sausage. When it starts sticking to my hand where I have to, you know, pull it off my glove, I know that it's uh, where I want it to be. And you can really see how green the stuff's starting to turn. This is our, uh, this is for our red chorizo. So this is Wahio chilies that we uh, reconstituted in some tallow, along with um, some garlic and some onions. From the green chorizo that we did, that's really bright and fresh. This is on the other side of the spectrum. This one has a little bit of kick to it. It's, uh, it's a little bit more savory. It'll be a completely different flavor profile than the green one. Now we're gonna have our sausage party. We are one of the few to be opening a restaurant during this uh, pandemic. The community wants us probably more open than anybody. So we're, we're really, uh, they're rooting for us and we're really just, we're really trying to get open for them so they can get their barbecue. Hey, how you doing? You good? Yeah, you're welcome. You guys want another one? Being one of the few craft barbecue destinations in Southern California, I want to push the boundaries of what American barbecue can be. Before getting into barbecue, I was, to be quite honest, I didn't really know what I really wanted to do. Uh, it did, it kept me out of trouble and, and gave me a, uh, 
a purpose and uh, it was really just an obsession.